Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining. Uh, we were made sure to set up tables across this area to promote social distancing. So given the number of people on the outskirts, uh, I think we're happy to be back together with each other. So thank you all for being here. We're first, as is customarily the case, uh, we have greetings for various members of our community, um, campus, as well as more broadly. And we'd like to start off with an alumna of ours, Becky Prophet, also our mayor. Good morning. Um, I am a theater professor at Alfred University, but I'm also the mayor of the village. And what I uh, really appreciate is the fact that all of you are here, that you are about to launch your 186th year, and that it will be a tremendous success. One of the reasons for the tremendous success is the cooperation that developed last year and the previous half year in terms of controlling COVID in the village as best we could. The magic was that Alfred State, Alfred University, and the Village of Alfred held discussions once a week on what was going on on each campus and how we could help each other. Um, as a result, thank you so much. Um, you're masking, you're vaccinating when it was available. All of that made this village and our valley a very safe and truly magical place. Thank you for that. Thank you all for doing that and uh, encouraging our students to do the same. In the meantime, I need to put in a plug for the village. Of course, last year, we provided the food. It was virtual and fun and no applause. We enjoyed doing it, um, but thank you very much. Enjoy our community. Um, we have a variety of businesses uh, in the center of the village and um, it is a beautiful place to spend your academic lives and, and your professional lives. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Her Honor. Uh, next, we'll have Tim Nichols. Well, we'll, since you're already up here, we'll do a little reverse order on behalf of our hook and ladder company. I'm already uh, turning this up, sorry. Uh, yes, I, I, I am here. Uh, I'm here today uh, representing the A.E. Crandall Hook and Ladder Company. Before I start, I'd like to ask anybody who's on the company to stand just for a second so we can recognize you. Oh, yes. Stand up if you're on the, on the Crandall Company. Thanks so much. Uh, when I first attended one of these breakfasts, I could have never imagined that I'd be up here representing the fire department. It was kind of the furthest thing from my mind. I assumed that to be on the fire department, you had to be kind of a young, brawny swashbuckler like Angus Powers and not an old guy like me. Um, I, but uh, uh, back right before the, the pandemic started, I had sort of a, a, a really powerful experience when I attended the, the memorial service with Professor Bill DeBrell. And, I was really uh, just so uh, swept up and so impressed by the, the esprit de corps of, among the, the members of the Crandall Company that were there and by the life of service that Bill had led. And I, you know, I just, it had been the furthest thing from my mind, but I thought, well, you know, Bill was an older gentleman. I'm an older gentleman. I suppose I could, you know, sign up to, you know, help them out now that they've lost a member. And so I talked to the, uh, to the, uh, to Kevin Gagney, who's our membership coordinator, and you know, uh, and then and one, I moved to Alfred in December, and before I knew it, I was uh, on the fire department um, as, as a largely like uh, very inexperienced and mostly unhelpful member. But I, uh, <laughs> I, but they have since I've uh, been being trained as a driver, and uh, uh, um, John Hosford approached me about possibly driving both the ambulance and the. Uh, and the fire truck and training to do that. And that took me back to another experience I had four years ago, I had a health emergency and, uh, and where I used to live and an ambulance crew showed up and transported me the whole way to Rochester. I didn't think too much about it at the time, but I, I, that joining Crandall made me think like, here are these guys who were sitting at home in their warm houses watching TV and all of a sudden, you know, they um, uh, just like Bill DeBrell and all these folks here, they jumped up and ran out um, 
to rescue me, as in a sense, on one of the darkest and scariest nights of my life. And they were friendly and professional and competent. And I thought, boy, that, this would be a way for me to pay that forward and to do that for others. And, uh, and it also has been just a terrific way to get to know my new community of Alfred. I just moved here in December. Love the place, love the university, love the town, love the fire department. And so uh, we are always desirous and eager to have additional members. I heard, first heard about it at a breakfast like this. And so if, if that's something that appeals to you, a couple things that you could do. You could uh, talk to um, our uh, president, who is Rebecca Weaver Ham, uh, to Kevin Gagney, that's who I spoke with, who is our membership chair, or really any of us. And you also could attend our, one of our practices to see what it's like. We practice every night, Sunday night at at seven o'clock over at the fire hall. I think that's my whole spiel. I don't want to take up any of, uh, of uh, any more of Andy's time having already butted in front of him. So thanks so much. And uh, here's to a great year for all of us at Alfred. Thanks, Tim. Now, Andy, if no one else gets up in front of you, it's your turn with our chemistry department. And on behalf of Alfred Charities. Good morning, everyone. Each year, the Alfred Alfred Station Community Chest is part of the AU Charities Drive, and we raise money for charities connected to the Alfred Alfred Station Community Chest, the Allegheny County United Way, and the United Way of the Southern Tier, which is Steuben County. Many of you know that Wes Benz, retired professor of chemistry, was instrumental in keeping both the Community Chest and AU Charities Drives going for decades. The current volunteers on the board deeply appreciate all that he did for the Alfred community and Alfred University. In early November, the AU Charities Drive will officially commence with a letter to all AU employees. AU employees who decide to, to contribute towards these causes can utilize payroll deduction if they wish, starting in January 2022. So on the, on the mailing itself, you can figure out which of those three organizations you may want to focus on, or you can do a combination of both. And in terms of you know, our fundraising goal for the 2022 campaign, it hasn't been set yet. It'll be around $35,000. All residents of Alfred and Alfred Station will receive a form in the mail from the Alfred Alfred Station Community Chest. The Community Chest Board is made up of volunteers, Cam Duke from Duke's Pizza, Catherine Chambers, Kurt Decker, Peter McLean's the treasurer, Linnell Sewell's the secretary, Laurel Buckwalters the president, and I'm the vice president. Feel free to contact any of us if you have questions. All community chest charities funded give services to Alfred and Alfred Station. The top three charities funded are the A.E. Crandall Hook and Ladder Company's ambulance service. That's by far the largest recipient. And any time a student or a faculty member or a staff person or anybody in the village needs an ambulance, it's free. Years ago, I fell on campus on the ice right before spring break. I got a ride in the Alfred ambulance myself, so it can happen. So, so the other largest charities in terms of amounts are the Office for Aging's Personal Emergency Response System to let senior citizens live in their houses for longer, and the Alfred Station Fire Company. Other charities include the Mental Health Association of Allegheny County, the SBCA, the Heart Comfort House, and you'll see a list on the form. The board thanks the AU community for its past support and any support in the future, and please keep an eye out for that correspondence in November. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, Sarah Reinerson Moody uh, with our ATSC is going to talk about that. Sarah. It's our Administrative Technical Specialist Council, for those of you that are new to us. Good morning. I'm here today on behalf of the Administrator and Technical Specialist Council, which is one of our three employee um, councils on campus. If you are an administrator or technical specialist, 
then you are represented by the ATSC. You may be wondering what the ATSC does. So here is a little information about what we can offer you as employees. We organize an open informational meeting on the second Wednesday of every month to improve communication between the staff and the higher administration within the university on different areas and topics involving everyone on campus from students all the way up to the executive team. Meetings have included topics such as the university budget, enrollment management updates, new initiatives and policies on campus, the modern think survey results, APEX initiatives, COVID updates, and how they affect staff and hourly and salary employees. Council members have observational status on various board of trustee meetings, which provides invaluable information that we try to bring back to all ATSC members. Council representatives also meet with the president and provost each um, once a semester, along with representatives of the faculty senate, support staff council, and student senate to discuss various important topics throughout campus. Council representatives sit on the university advisory committees for the benefit committee, the recognition committee, and the budget and planning committee, among others ad hoc. In short, the council is the voice of the ATS staff in university governance. We try to make that voice an advocacy program for our constituents on issues that matter to them and that are brought up to us on their behalf. We hope that you feel free to bring any issues to our attention and um, by either contacting me directly or any of the other ATS members. Um, it's on the website. I didn't want to list everybody. But if you have any questions, just let me know and then I'll find you your rep. Um, again, our meetings are the second Wednesday of each month. Um, right now they're virtual, but we might offer them both in the future. So if you think you may want to join or if you just want to uh, dial in or show up, just let me know and I'll make sure that you get the link. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot, Sarah. And last, a tag team, Crystal Henshaw and Gail Gebhardt, representing our Sports Staff Council. Thank you, Mark. Um, so the support, um, I'm co-chair, Crystal Henshaw, co-chair of uh, Support Staff Council. The Support Staff Council um, represents um, all the support staff across the university, includes both um, statutory and uh, non-stat staff. Um, we are we have 12 um, elected staff members um, across the whole university. We act as a liaison and an advisory group between the staff and administration. Um, again, like uh, ATS Council, we, um, we're, we're the voice uh, for the support staff. So I'm going to pass it on to you. <laughs> I'm Gail Gebhard. Um, I've been on support staff for a while. Um, I really enjoy, um, it's very meaningful work. And uh, we meet the second Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. and the location is always changing. We try and get all the way around campus. Um, and the president, I believe, encourages this. And that hour that we meet is um, part of your work day. Um, we do have several openings right now. We're looking for some people to join us. Um, and if you are interested, talk to Crystal or myself and um, you don't have to be a member to attend. You don't have to be a member of the support staff council to bring a concern to us, um, but we would love to have you there. So thank you. Happy 186. We're delighted to be on the verge of starting our 186th year here at Alfred University. Special welcome to our newbies. Uh, one of our new employees, um, is already proudly wearing uh, the swag. Uh, our School of Art and Design Dean, Lauren Lake, outfitted or sent uh, all of our new employees in that unit swag. He came dressed appropriately to the first meeting. Leslie Rollins is also a recent graduate of ours. We take this opportunity to introduce our new employees. So we'd like to ask our VPs, uh, starting with uh, Beth Ann Doby of Academic Affairs with our academic deans, we'll introduce the employees for that unit.
Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to introduce each of the deans and ask them to introduce their new people. So first, I'd like to welcome Dean Lauren Lake. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> As Beth Ann said, my name is Lauren Lake. My pronouns are she and her. Um, and hold on for this ride because we have a lot of new faces. I'd like to welcome the following faculty from the School of Art and Design and staff. Rebecca Arde, Visiting Assistant Professor of Glass. Adara Willard, Visiting Assistant Professor of Ceramics. Ray Zhang, our idea generator, and idea stands for our inclusion, diversity, equity, and access generator. Ray. Dimitri Kalin, he's our part time foundry technician. Dr. Lewis Johnson, the fall 2021 International Randall Chair in Art History. Um, it's all very exciting, but please hold your applause. <laughs> uh, Sean Lopez, a research administration specialist for the Institute of Electronic Arts. Kyle O'Connor, our grinding room assistant and a recent alum. Reese Peacock, our glass technician. Sharon McConnell in her new position as the director of the School of Art and Design Galleries. Joanne Quinones, Assistant Professor of Sculpture, Mixed Media and Fiber. Well, it's hard, I know you guys up there. <laughs> Leslie Rollins, who uh, Mark get it, get already gave a shout out to in uh, Expanded Media Technician. Megan Sheffer, Visiting Assistant Professor of Foundations. James Tengi, Raw Materials Technician. Augustine Uzor, Visiting Assistant Professor of Painting. Maria Villanueva, visiting assistant professor of expanded media and animation. So that's, I'm not done, but we should give a round of applause for the School of Art and Design. In the Performing Arts Division, Dr. Yoshiko Arahata, visiting assistant professor of music. Eliza Beckwith, visiting assistant professor of theater. And Joshua Walder, Visiting Assistant Professor of Theater. So I hope when you um, see these new faces on campus, you will welcome them. And um, there's, there's a lot of them, so it's a lot to remember, but we're really excited for the year ahead. Have a good morning. I'm gonna fill in for Dean Gaustad this morning. So in our Inamori School of Engineering, we welcome Alyssa Faulkner, Secretary, and Aaron Ta Taylor, Digital Fabrication Lab Specialist. Welcome, Aaron. And now I call on Dean Robert Stein, please. Thank you, welcome everyone. In the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, we have six new people. Uh, Dr. Jessica Domino, Visiting Assistant Professor of Geology. Dr. Sherry Ehrlich, Assistant Professor of Education. Jason Honick, Director of Athletic Training Programs and Associate Professor. Dr. Moitza Kuplen, Visiting Assistant Professor of Philosophy. Dr. Rahman Mansour, Visiting Assistant Professor of Biology, and Dr. Jennifer Gordon, Visiting Assistant Professor of Physiology and Anatomy. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Dean J. Serio, please. Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year <clears throat> um, to the uh, School of Graduate and Continuing Studies. Uh, we have Kelly Baker, who's the secretary for the Powell Institute, and 
uh, Child and Family Services Center, uh, Dr. Danielle Cowley, Associate Professor of Education, uh, Corning Programs, um, Jen Garassi, who's uh, Secretary to the Division of Counseling and School Psychology, and Dr. Jacob Wadsworth, uh, Assistant Professor of School Psychology. Welcome, everyone. For our university libraries, Dean Brian Sullivan. Morning, everybody. Very nice to see all of you. Um, the university libraries are delighted to introduce Maria Planansky as our new collection management librarian. We are also happy to welcome into the registrar's office, Kristen Crawford, student service specialist. Now I'd like to call on Jonathan Kemp. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Great to see so many smiling faces. I know even between the masks, I can, I can see them. Um, just quickly, thank you for everything you have all done this past year, especially on the recruitment side and uh, even on the student affairs side. It's uh, been one heck of a year and couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. Uh, in enrollment management, we're happy and delighted to welcome Leo Panfile, who is a uh, recent alum who is an admissions counselor and in financial aid, Brielle, where are you? Brielle's over there. Welcome. Um, she's been here for since the summer. Great to have you. And then on the athletic side of the house, um, we have Marley Bender, who's a new athletic trainer. She's not here. Um, Letty Hibbard, new assistant athletic trainer. Uh, Eric Canfee, our new head men's basketball coach. Welcome. And uh, Rebecca Street, our new women's uh, lacrosse coach. Uh, I guess. More? Yeah. I'm yeah. Up. Keep oh, going. there we go. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, in the equestrian center, which uh, there's a big table over there, Jonathan Jackson, barn assistant, and Kyle Van Hart, barn assistant. Office of Res Life, uh, Daniela Isabella, who's our new Res Life secretary, Max Koskoff, who is probably out and about training all of our RAs right now. You may see him in a golf cart, and Andrew Lavoy, uh, his right hand person, uh, assistant director of housing and operations. Public safety, Joseph Bennett, who is a public safety officer, and then in the wellness center, uh, Thomas Boyle. Uh, LPN, Kendra Lamphere, our new COVID coordinator, and Andrew Connell, who is a recent uh, alum, both uh, undergrad and soon to be master's program. He's our new Saxon success coordinator. I think that's it. Um, and Giovina is not here. Mark, yeah. Mark, oh, Mark. Good morning. Uh, from the uh, business and finance group, we have, uh, I'm sorry, Amber Wade, student services representative in uh, human resources. I'm pleased to uh, introduce Ashley Yakarin, my human resource associate, payroll, Brittany Hadley, payroll specialist, procurement, Bethany Adams, procurement support special assistant, and Ashley Carl, mailroom clerk, then from sponsored research, Austin Harvey Research Administration Specialist. I've also been asked to uh, name the people from facilities. Uh, we have Brandon Canfield, custodian, John Caulfield, groundskeeping landscaper, Nicholas Highland, landscape technician, Jamaro Kimbrough, janitor, Jason Miller, bully trades, Angela Paxton, custodian, Kyle Reynolds, custodian, Lori Rodriguez, custodian, Kevin Seeger, custodian, 
Kelly Stevens, custodian, and Caitlin Yoakum, uh, also a custodian. I think that leaves us with the University of Madison. And also in procurement, Bethany Adams, procurement support assistant, Ashley Carl, mailroom clerk, and Austin Harvey, research administrative specialist. You did that, okay, so. Before we go there, uh, one more, um, Mark Reardon, you've got a new staff member in advancement, we do, so. That seems like an awful lot of walk for one person, so. Uh, Caroline Burgos joined us, she's done the and event specialist. And Carolyn's a two-time graduate of ours, so we're delighted to have her back. We also have one new trustee that started with us in July, a class of 83 member. Uh, last January, he became CEO of Crayola. Uh, their big problem last year was producing crayons quickly enough. Demand was up 50%, people looking to do creative stuff, plus they had to shut down operations initially in March and April. So, but they managed to resolve those challenges. Among other things, they've given us a variety of crayons to give to all of our new students. We have a new life trustee, Ann Moskowitz, who she and her husband have had a huge impact on our university, continue to be amazingly supportive and engaged in uh, Ann's case. Enrollment, a uh, very strong uptick in inquiries and applications. A big thing for us to work on is yield. Single best predictor is people coming to campus. Our international applications went up uh, significantly. Uh, a number of those we found in recent weeks are having a hard time getting visas, travel arrangements. We're going to look to pick them up uh, by January. But yield is the key thing, making sure we return to normalcy, getting people on campus and making sure we're also reaching out, like Jonathan said, we want to. Uh, we had a decline last year due to COVID, people deciding to postpone college for a year or a semester or not going at all. We're starting to see an uptick, but we think we can do even better than that. So, but thank you to Jonathan and his enrollment management team for all the hard work that's gone into creating that rebound. Among other things to mention about the rebound, it's probably gonna be our most diverse class on a number of dimensions. Uh, we have 17 different countries represented and 30 different states. A uh, Friday, uh, if you can join us, so we're asking all of our staff, uh, Bethann, to line up on Academic Alley. Sorry. Oh, the, the one going down. Okay, between Harder and Skulls. Uh, to welcome our students, to celebrate their onboarding with us. And then uh, we're gonna be delighted to welcome back one of our trustees, Cheryl Blanchard, class of 86. Uh, she is the CEO of publicly created Annika Technologies out of the Boston area. Uh, she is currently the only Alfred University representative on the National Academy of Engineering. So she's had a very distinguished research career, but also management career. And uh, she and her husband, Ramsey, have a son that's starting with us. So it's going to be especially meaningful to her as well. Retention uh, last year was a tough year uh, due to COVID in terms of returning students. We're starting to see a nice rebound. Uh, so thanks as well to our student affairs team, our academic affairs. We think we can ultimately do better than 80% on this first to second year retention rate so that there's important work to do but uh, we like where the trajectory is going. Advancement, we're off to a good year uh, so far. I, big news from reunion was adding 31 new Saxon Circle members. The Omicron sisters committed to sponsoring 30 of our students to join the Saxon Circle, and they're gonna be working on the criteria on engagement and leadership on who they end up sponsoring, and they've challenged all former members of other sororities and fraternities to step up and follow or exceed their example. One of the gifts that's recently and that we've been promoting is being a member of our heritage circle. Uh, this is something our board chair, Greg Connors does with all our board members, that we'd like you to support Alfred University annually through the Saxon Circle, the Strategic Investment Fund. We'd like you to be part of the quiet and then public phase of our campaign through a major gift but uh, please be sure to include Alfred University in your estate plans. 
Uh, one of those bequests, Heritage Circle commitments that came through just a few months ago was from class of 1940 member Millie Pape, who is particularly passionate about our Judson Leadership Center Women's Leadership Academy. Uh, this will be a $2 million uh, investment in upgrading what we do there. We have one of the oldest women's leadership academies in the country. Just the importance of talking about stuff. Uh, we received an email a few weeks ago from a member of our class of 58, Dr. Phil Lau. He went from here to get a PhD at Syracuse, had a distinguished career at Eastman Kodak, quite a few patents. When he saw what one fellow alum had done, the email was basically, I would like to set up an endowment through Heritage Circle Commitment to sponsor Asian American students and to provide scholarship support to them. And that's something we stress throughout reunion just as a way to norm, be thinking of Alfred on these important dimensions. Pam Bernstein is another example of saying, you don't want to, sometimes how you time and ask or what you ask for was, we were planning to ask her for one year of additional support to get us through COVID this year. Uh, she ended up committing to five years of additional support to make sure that we continue the momentum of what we're doing in professional advising to complement what the faculty do so well with our students. We're looking for a worthy successor for our Vice President of University Advancement. Want to thank the committee members on campus. We have a number of trustees that are helping us that when it gets down to the final list, we'll provide input because the person's relationship with trustees is critical to our success. Each year we raise now about 22 million in new gifts and commitments. Our budget's about 65 million. So it's really important for us to get this decision right. Uh, we have 16 candidates so far. It looks like it'll be a good pool, and we're continuing to build the pool. And in the near future, we're going to be looking um, at starting to interview through the first round of these candidates. And we're using a search firm on this important search. A big shout out. Is Janet here? Yeah. Uh, our magic coordinate uh, at Reunion. We had over 400 alums and friends on campus. Uh, Janet was the one that came up with the recommitment ceremony uh, for AU couples. Uh, so every year when we're doing reunion in person, I, I get to wear a gold collar and a purple tunic, thanks to her. But just there was a lot of wonderful activities going on. Uh, and because of the construction timing, we were worried uh, there were some detours people had to take uh, uniformly. The alums just loved being back here. Uh, rekindling their connection to the university and what made their lives so much better. We're still in the process of campus beautification. Um, this was some of the before uh, visuals. Uh, you've probably noticed uh, that at least some of the new campus signs. They're courtesy of Jim Jordan, a member of our board of trustees, class of 1972. Uh, just as a way to promote a uh, sense of place, but also safety. Uh, in EMS now, this comes with the wayfinding system with addresses, GPS coordinates. So if we need to have them get to a place in a hurry, uh, they will be able to do so. Um, and Jamie Babcock and his team especially deserve a lot of credit to lining up the contractors. As you can imagine or have read about in the news, it hasn't been an easy time to get materials, contractors. So a lot of the challenge had to be making sure they stay on campus because other schools, if they leave, they may not come back to finish a job. So uh, Jamie, uh, shout out to you and your team. And then we had to take care of a sprinkler system on the top two floors of Oppenheim. It was gonna go down to the wire. We had a water main break last Friday, but uh, Jamie and his team hopped on it and were looked to be on time and be able to facilitate the move-in. If you've been inside uh, the School of Art and Design buildings, um, if you haven't, well worth a look. You know, what Lauren Lake and her fellow staff members, uh, faculty, and especially students have been up to, it's just a great before and after. A lot of concrete, a darkness, um, hidden spaces about opening up these buildings, creating more intersection points, creating more life and light and even a lot of bright pink. So it comes with a new logo as well for arts at Alfred University, both School of Art and Design 
in our performing arts division. So uh, go check it out if you haven't done so already. COVID protocols, uh, vaccinations are required for students. We've had 50 requests for exemptions to date, uh, largely on religious grounds, some on medical. The medical ones have to have uh, a doctor, an official doctor sign off on them. Our wellness center has been reviewing them. Uh, strongly encouraged for faculty and staff. Uh, we're as of today debating uh, proof of vaccination so that we, we took a survey of our employees in June but we may well be out with an email in the near future asking you to provide a copy of the vaccination card so we at least can gauge where we are as an employee base. Are there any further steps we need to take? Uh, safety protocols for those with exemptions. We decided to go with masks um, at the start and then see how this latest surge plays out. It's rolled through reasonably quickly in places like the UK. So far, we haven't reached a peak yet in the United States. So we're gonna have to keep watching that closely and stay nimble. Uh, masks indoors, we didn't have a case of in-classroom documented transmission. So particularly stressing in classroom settings until we get through it, but in all indoor spaces, unless you in your, in your room or office can isolate masks are required and outdoors when you can't socially distance. So two words to leave you with, and these are coming out of the strategic planning we've been doing. Our current strategic plan runs through next summer. So we're starting work on the next five-year plan. And two of the themes that are emerging are intersections and inclusivity. Uh, we make fun, we only have one stoplight in town. Uh, this is the only place that I know of in the United States that has more higher ed institutions than stoplights. Um, the stoplight of ours dates back to 1974. Each June, we have a birthday party that celebrates it. But metaphorically, the intersections we create uh, in our community, across disciplines, across co-curricular settings, between the past and the future, with knowledge, with our own personal development. So we're especially well equipped because of all that we have in a small place, uh, the range of programs, for that to be a huge asset for us to differentiate us. And at the same time, we're a pretty small place. Uh, and that can be a very huge asset as well, especially when it promotes inclusivity. So we would like to ask for your help in particular in that regard, uh, to make sure we're there for each other and especially for our students. It's been a really tough time the last 19 months. Uh, so making sure we're checking in on each other on a regular basis and especially the students. We've already had certain athletic teams move in. Uh, we've had uh, international students start to move in. Our first years, move in by and large on Thursday. Uh, so one of the things Jonathan and Nadine Shardlow are doing, they're putting me to work Thursday morning, actually helping it in Canon Barisi moving in. Uh, so if you'd like to help in a similar way, let me know or let them know. Um, if you'd like to just come by and say hello, we're welcoming our new students at the Joyce Walton Center. Uh, our returning students will be onboarding them going through health protocols on Saturday. So one of the times come by and say hello. Uh, wear your name tag. If we haven't gotten your name tag, uh, we will remedy that, but uh, it's just something as a way to help facilitate that icebreaker for people that we don't know. Uh, if you look back at our campus handbook up through the early 60s, we required our students to say hello. Um, and it still has this component to our DNA. And I can personally attest to this uh, through my morning runs. 60, 65% of the people I run into in the village or through our campus will say hello to you. Uh, when I ran in Rochester before, it was about 25%. When I ran in LA or Tucson, Arizona or Boston before that, it was about five to 10%. So it's still, a very key asset for us, but we can't take it for granted. We, it's on us to keep building. 
while we encourage you to do that, uh, I can also assure you, and especially one who's averse to hats, we're not going to bring back beanies. <laughs> so uh, up through the 60s, we also required people to wear beanies as first year. So that, that's not coming back, but, but help us with the hello. And with that, we'll close and uh, honored and delighted to be your colleague. Uh, if there are any ways we could help you with the start of the semester that I could help you, let me know. Happy 186. Uh, let's be the bearers of light and uh, hello to this new year. Enjoy the rest of the day.